beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed we receive your power we receive your wisdom. You are the wind of God. Ruach Elohim. Help us tonight, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let your word come with fire. Let it come with power. Let it change us. And we vow to give you all the glory. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. Happy Independence, please be seated. Just help those under the anointing and then let's get to the business of tonight. We have a lot to do this night. Hallelujah. God is moving upon us so mightily, so marvelously. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'd like us to please honor um, Reverend Akila, House on the Rock Church, Joss, thank you so much for the honor of your presence. Hallelujah. And I just spotted um, Pastor Sam Dogara. God bless you. House on the Rock, Gombe. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. I welcome everyone in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. And um, tonight we're going to be praying for Nigeria. Hallelujah. Um, for those of you who are outside of this nation, today is 1st October and we're celebrating the independence of our nation. And so I dedicate my teaching tonight. Um, it is a teaching that applies to all, but then um, I dedicate it to a pursuit for the new Nigeria, a pursuit for a better, greater, wiser, more productive Nigeria in the name of of Jesus Christ and father we ask that you will help us tonight in the name of Jesus let me encourage you before we get to the word always insist that you leave the presence of God wiser always insist that you leave the presence of God better there is no reason why you should come to God's presence and then return back being the old person the Bible says they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. This teaching is a prophetic message, not only for this nation, but for anyone at all, because an individual can become a nation. Hallelujah. Blessing Abraham, he said, I will bless you and I will make you as an individual a great nation. Hallelujah. So let's get to the business of the night. How nations become great how nations become great let me encourage everyone connecting online please call everyone you know to be part of this teaching session right now because what you're about to hear will not only profit your nation our nation it will profit your family your organization your ministry and your life how 
nations become great. This is with a particular bias to our prayer, our press, our proposal for the new Nigeria. Write this down, please. Nations, just like organizations, families, and individuals can become great. Nations, just like organizations, just like families, and just like individuals can become great. This is the first thing I want us to know. Nations, just like individuals, just like organizations, just like families and individuals can become great. This is very profound that a nation, just like an organization, just like a family, just like an individual can become great. I've had the honor and the privilege of traveling a bit. And as I have gone from nation to nation, I have wondered, um, why certain nations look like the envy of the earth and then other nations still remain in a sorry state. This is also true for families. Many of us here know families that you knew them before, before and now is still the same thing. You knew them 15 years ago, they are still the same, nothing growing, nothing changing, no improvement, no transformation. And many of us know individuals like that in fact, for many, they do not even remain the same. They diminish to very inferior versions of themselves. As you traverse across the length and the breadth of this nation, sometimes you are left in shock as to how things, people, families can deteriorate so painfully. This has been true for many African nations. But it's important for us as we start tonight to know that nations, just like organizations, families and individuals can become great you believe that for yourself shout a loud amen. amen the second thing i want us to know tonight is that there are scriptural and time tested principles that are responsible for the greatness of nations the greatness of individuals the greatness of organizations that there are scriptural and time-tested principles. Nations do not just become great. Individuals do not just become great. Businesses do not just become great. Churches and ministries do not just become great. Greatness is not just an impartation. It's not just a blind desire. There are a number of scriptural and time-tested... Please someone attend. Scriptural and time-tested principles that is responsible or are responsible for greatness. Let's look at two scriptures. Number one, Genesis 12, 1 to 3. Genesis 12, 1 to 3. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house. He says, Unto a land that I will show you. Verse 2. He says, And I will make thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Verse 3, I will bless them that bless you, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Genesis 28, 1 and 2, showing you scriptures that attest to the fact that it is the will of God for individuals, for nations, for families to be great. Genesis chapter 28 am i right on that did i get that right it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe deuteronomy my apologies i said genesis deuteronomy thank you it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently watch this now unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day. Please read the remaining part. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. The Lord will set thee high above all the nations of the earth. And then verse 2 says that this blessing shall come on thee and overtake you. If you hearken to the voice of the Lord. Let me give you one last scripture. Joshua chapter 3 and verse 7. Profound scripture. The Lord said unto Joshua. 
this day I will begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel that they may know that as I was with Moses so I will be with you this day I will begin to magnify you nations can be great individuals can be great as I meditated this morning on the independence of our dear nation as a case study to other African nations and indeed nations across the globe I was really um, on one hand happy but then on another hand really concerned and I began to pray a prayer in my heart that God will help us and grant us the understanding to know how nations truly become great hallelujah there are a number of principles that I want to share with you now I guarantee you by the integrity of scripture that if you apply these principles to your life your family your organization and even our nation there is no power in existence that sustains the power or the ability to stop any nation and any individual that works in keeping with these principles are you ready number one the first reason why nations become great or the first principle that is responsible for the greatness of individuals nations corporations is called vision please write it down vision vision what is vision vision is the ability to see things as they ought to be and not just as they are the ability to see things as they ought to be not just as they are comma alongside the determination to bring that picture to manifestation the ability to see things as they ought to be and not as they are and then the determination to bring that vision that picture you have seen to manifestation is called vision merely having a wish of a better future a hopeful future is not vision enough that's just imagination well utilized it only becomes vision when you have the picture alongside the determination to walk that picture to fruition nations and organizations are built and become great through the power of vision proverbs 29 18 profound scripture Proverbs 29 18 here's what the Bible says we where there is no vision the people perish the word perish there does not just mean die they veer off the course they decline one version says they cast off restraint where there is no vision the people decline where there is no vision the people cast off restraint and they even perish Hallelujah. Some of the nations and organizations, families and individuals who have ascended realms of greatness in our world today are people who, number one, are governed by vision, clearly defined vision. Now, let me tell you something about vision. There is a threefold dimension to understanding vision. If you want to become a visionary person, number one, you must understand history. Number two, you must understand destiny. Number three, you must understand the unity component of vision. I'm going to explain it. It is impossible to be a visionary person without understanding history. History is very important because it helps us to connect things past to make sense out of things past and then to be able to come up with resolutions that out of those resolutions will come profound pictures that lead us to the future An average the average Nigerian today does not even understand the faintest history of Nigeria ask the average Nigerian today how much how old is Nigeria some will say 12 some will say 100 are we together some will say 60. I'm not talking of naive children, even leaders who are occupying government positions. Are we together now? Yeah. We must have an understanding of history. Families must understand their history. 
Individuals must understand their history. Churches and ministries, there are many, respectfully speaking, churches and men of God in Nigeria who do not understand the history of the church. They do not even know the history of the church in Nigeria. You see, life and destiny is a relay. And it is dangerous when you receive the baton without understanding antecedents. Are we together now? History helps you to know what to correct. It helps you to know what to retain. It helps you to know what to improve upon. Without the knowledge of history, you will not know what is worth correcting. Without the knowledge of history, you will not know what is worth retaining. Without the knowledge of history, you will not know what is worth improving. Some of the most successful organizations, families, and even nations are very meticulous about preserving history. They will go to any length to see and to insist that they build institutions that preserve their history and insist that their citizens have a clear understanding as to where they are coming from. There are many people, for instance, who know more about the history of other nations than their nations, the history of other families than their families. History is very powerful. I was just contemplating and trying to rehearse in my mind as much of Nigeria's history that I know. And I found out that I had to take responsibility myself to refresh my understanding. Hallelujah. Most people shout and pray and jump about a new Nigeria, a new Africa, a new world, and they cannot tell you where we are coming from. Hallelujah. History is very important. Your family did not just evolve. What happened that your family became such a great family known to all the community? There must have been a starting point. Are we together? What happened that your family became so poor and the least of the father's stripes? What happened? It's important to know history. If you do not know history, the negative aspects of history will repeat themselves in your life because you will not know what to change. You will not know what to fight. You will not know what to retain. You will not know what to improve upon. We just live in blind regret, hating Nigeria perhaps, hating our families perhaps, hating certain churches perhaps, and not trying to find out where did this come from. If it's an error in doctrine, where did it come from? If it's accuracy of spiritual understanding, where did it come from? The Bible is a compendium of history. Are we together now? Every believer must know how did, how did the Christian faith come about? The Bible documents that. Among the many things that are captured in the Bible is the history, the journey of the believer's faith. So that you are not blindly believing Jesus just believing in Jesus just because you are afraid or scared of hell. Vision. Hallelujah. Do you know this complicated nation? Well, not complicated really. I would say diverse. Nigeria is one of the most diverse nations on earth. History tells us. This is true. We call it today the Federal Republic of Nigeria. But did you know that history, I hope I'm able to remember this now, that I want you to know history. Now, <laughs> hallelujah. Yeah. History tells us that Nigeria, do you know that there are about 371 ethnic groups in Nigeria alone? 371 ethnic groups, 774 local governments. Are we together? Can you imagine that? 36 states, including the FCT, six geopolitical zones. Nigeria. How did Nigeria start? History tells us. Now, of course, being, being a, a, diverse, a diverse group of people, but history would tell us that from the 1900s, in fact, 1900, I recall that history tells us that the British came together, remember? And they brought in, they formed what we call the Northern Protectorate, the Southern Protectorate. 14 years later, January 1st, 1914, Sir Lord Lugard, history will tell us, he brought an amalgamation and it became the protectorate called Nigeria. It was not yet a federal republic. And then by 1960, Nigeria now declared independence and was granted the independence from their British colony. This is what history tells us. Are we together now? 
under the leadership of men like um, Sir Frederick Lord Lugard. And then do you know that the independence of Nigeria, watch this now, that the independence of Nigeria, when we came together, we were not yet a federal republic. We were a nation. It was in 1963, I recall, I think October, no date was given. I'm, I'm not sure I've seen any date. We just know it's October, 1963, that Nigeria officially became a federal republic. Hallelujah. Why am I telling you this? History, so that you have an understanding. So officially today, Nigeria is 63 years as a nation, 60 years as a federal republic, and 109 years from the time of amalgamation. And yet, look at our states now. I'm not just exciting you with history, I'm provoking you. When you are 60 years or 63, or 109 years, there are fruits that must justify that longevity of time. Vision. Vision. Hallelujah. Right from the time of the first president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, you know Chief Namdi Benjamin Azikwe. Many of you don't know Benjamin, so you add Benjamin to the list. Hallelujah. Yeah. History tells us that he was the last governor general and then the first president of Nigeria. Now, my point is this. Without a sense of history, why do you want to become a governor? Why do you want to become a leader, a house member? You do not know where we are coming from. Why do you even want to become a man of God leading a people within a nation whose history you do not understand? Are we together? History is what frames some of the things that become the policies that govern nations. You cannot bring the policy of another nation to another nation without understanding history. And then number two, destiny. Still discussing vision. You must understand history to be a visionary person. Then you must understand destiny. What is destiny? Where we are going to. There is no nation that becomes great in this kind of confusion. There is bankruptcy of clarity. The average African, the average Nigerian cannot give you a clear picture with all due respect of where we are going to. We just say we are going forward. Forward is not a location. Are we together now? Yeah. There is something called the American dream. It is a concise, clear representation of a nation, graphic enough for anyone to, because we think in pictures, and I've taught you that transformation is difficult without a reference. So ask the average young Nigerian, where are you going to? The next 10 years, what will Nigeria be like? We say, we'll be great. That is not an inspiring statement. What do, what do you mean by we'll be great? What are the indices to measure the greatness? Nations become great. Families become great. Ministries become great when they have vision. The last component of vision is an agreement to all go the same direction. You see, let me tell you this. It is impossible to have unity without vision because everybody prior to vision must have their individual pursuits and ambitions. Are we together? A vision must be clear enough to allow people give up their personal agenda and pursue something that is big, cohesive, and galvanizing enough. We do not have this as a nation, unfortunately. For some, his assignment is to make money. Another person is to make sure that he rises be above his family members. And not, with, with all these, these pieces of self-driven ambitions, a nation cannot move forward. There are families that have a creed. They, they have built dynasties today because everyone will tell you what they stand to represent. Vision. So every time you see nations, families, corporations, and individuals that are stunted and are not growing, the diagnosis number one is the absence of vision. This is true for churches. The Bible says, write the vision. It says, make it plain. With all due respect, there are many spiritual platforms. This includes churches and other spiritual expressions. They cannot tell you why they exist. Why do we exist as a ministry? 
Someone will say to win souls. What does that mean? Another person will say to make sure that I weary the devil. What does that mean? Another person to say I must make it. What does that mean? Vision. You cannot unite a people until you bring a creed, a statement that everyone agrees to comply with. Do you know the reason why, one of the reasons I believe why we're finding it hard to make constructive progress as a people and as a nation is because all of us have not yet agreed and our agreement was not verified. It can two work together. Is that not in your Bible? So if I say I'm hungry, and you say I'm hungry, and you say I'm hungry, now we have a problem. What is the solution? Let us go to the restaurant. You have to verify that all of us have agreed that it is that restaurant we are going to. I may decide to go home to satisfy my hunger. Another person may decide to go to a restaurant. You can't assume that just because all of us are hungry, we all desire to go to the restaurant. No. Are we together now? So you have families who have their agenda. The father has his agenda. The mother has her agenda. The stubborn child who refused to get born again has his agenda. The one who is a pastor has his agenda. And everybody, and they say, let's unite. There cannot be unity. Listen to me. There cannot be unity without vision. The binder of all men is vision. Spiritually, it's the same thing. You cannot walk with the Spirit of God when you have your own agenda. Are you seeing the reason why when you come to God, you truly want to walk with God, you must be willing to lay down. To lay down does not mean to ignore. To believe that God has a, a more superior plan for your life than what you will have for yourself. And that even though you do not understand Him, you must trust Him. Knowing that Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. They are thoughts of peace he says and not of evil to give you an expected end can I tell you no matter how I love myself I can never love myself more than Jesus loves me are we together now so the one who died for you if he tells you I have designed a great destiny it is foolish to argue that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us and he says come I know you have your agenda you want to make it you want to be great I am aware I I I I, I died for you you follow me and I will lead you towards a destiny that will be nothing short of glory but now you can come with your agenda are you seeing now this is not just a thing that is a national issue it will affect your own relationship with the Lord because you come with your own vision and say Lord let me see your own and he says, no, you have to follow me by faith as I unravel it. And you say, you are joking. It took me years to build this vision for my life. You want to come and deceive me to lay it down and follow you so you cheat me later and leave me alone? No. He met men who were already fishermen. They were succeeding because they knew what they were doing. And he said, come, follow me. And they laid down their agenda and followed him. Could Peter ever make himself an apostle without Jesus? Did he ever believe that he would spearhead the gospel in the capacity that he did? What of Abraham, an idol worshiper, or of the Chaldeans? He was not an irresponsible man. He was just a limited man. Yet God had a vision to make him the landlord of the earth officially. And he called him. He says, you come out of your father's house. You will never be able to make constructive progress until you have a vision that is known to all that you lead not just to you who is leading if you are the only one who knows your vision then you go alone the bible says write the vision it says make it plain so that he will run that read it hallelujah number one vision to our lives our homes our families there are many parents who whose children do not understand the vision of the family where are we going to? Just go to school, become an adult, and go. Dear husband, what is the name of what we're doing? Now we're married, where are we going to? Don't ask me that question. Let's just keep going. Wherever we die or wherever we reach is where we were going. How do you lead that way? Imagine, will you follow any man who kicks his car, no matter how great the car is, and he says, follow me for a ride? You want to have an idea, even if you don't know it, it's comforting to know the destination. 
Okay, we are going to the mall. Okay, we are going to the police station. Okay, we are going to the church. Are we together? Only kidnappers don't tell you where they are taking you to. They don't carry you and tell you, okay, I'm taking you to the bush. You just keep, and they fire on all four cylinders. And you just find yourself going, almost dying, but you won't die. And then you get somewhere and they say, come out. You start walking. You can't return because you don't even know where you went to. And you can't bring anybody with you. Vision. You can never live a successful life. From infancy, I tell you sincerely, from the time we started this ministry, there was a vision clearly defined. Clearly defined. When we have retreat as the workers, we read out the vision for every worker in this ministry to understand, for every leader to understand. You are running your company, don't be telling people, bring profit, bring profit. They don't even know what the company exists for. Are we together? The difference between a son and a hireling is an understanding of vision and inheritance. A hireling is not interested in where you are taking the ministry, the company, wherever. So they can steal, they can do whatever and they don't care. But a son knows that because I understand this vision, it is also my inheritance, it is also my destiny, it is my business. Are we learning now? Number two. What is the second principle that makes nations great? Is God helping us already? Let me give you an assignment. Go back home before we get to number two. Go back home. Remember, we are praying for Nigeria. We are praying for ourselves. Go back home today and have a clearly defined vision for your life. Fathers, a clearly defined vision for your home. Ministers, a clearly defined, the great commission is not your vision. It's everybody's assignment. You must find your, your unique call. Hallelujah. You're a company. Don't rejoice and say, we made profit. We're a real estate company. What is our assignment? Our assignment is that our part of the national cake must come to us. That's not an assignment. So you find out that you cannot articulate why you are there. If you do not know why you exist, why should you be promoted? Hallelujah. Go and get a clear vision for your life. This is why I exist. I like John chapter 1, 6 and 7. Here's what it says about John. There was a man, he says, sent from God, whose name was John. Verse 7 says, the same came for a witness, to bear witness to the light that all men through him might believe. The moment John forgot his vision, he started declining till he died. When Jesus came, it was not just miracles he started performing. The Bible tells us that he went, verse 15, down to 18, that it was given to him, watch this now, it was given to him the scroll of Esaias. He came to Nazareth as his custom was. And the Bible says he found the place where it was written. Vision. My meat, he said, is to do the will of him that has sent me and finish it. Paul in, in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7, he says, Lo, I come, quoting Jesus, the messianic prophecy on Jesus, in the volume of the book, it is written of me to do thy will. Can I tell you, vision gives you focus. Vision gives you legitimacy to say no to many things. You don't have the right to say no to many things because our world is full of options. And it is not only bad things that kill. Good things that are not needed in your life can also kill you. When Satan tries bad things and it does not work, he will bring good things. His assignment is that you die, even if it's by the truth. Vision. I'm praying in the name of Jesus that Africa... African leaders, African church leaders, African political leaders, African economic leaders, Nigerian leaders will be people who will first understand the vision. Not just leave it to radio and TV houses to just coin up something, but that the leaders, that everyone himself will know that this is the vision, the Nigerian vision, the African vision. This is the vision for my family. This is the vision for my church or my ministry. 
Never call a people to join you over anything you do not understand yourself. You will be leading them towards confusion. When Moses came and met the people, he said, listen, I have come as a leader with an assignment. The assignment is that I've been sent by the God of the Hebrews to take you out of Egypt, a land of captivity, to a land flowing with milk and honey. And the people said, let's go. That's it, let's go. Vision number two. How nations become great. Number two, values. Please write it down. Values. Nations become great to the degree to which they have values. V-A-L-U-E-S. A technical word for it is called policies. Values or policies. In a more technical term, we call it policies. But then we call it values. I wrote here values define a people's ideas about life and gives them a template for living and for conducting their lives. I'll take it again. That values define people's ideas about life. And then it gives them a template for living and a template for conducting their lives. Watch this. When you get into a restaurant, a good restaurant maybe an expensive restaurant the first thing you see from the door is that there is a manner of behavior am i right on that there is a way the people greet there is a way the people dress there is a way the people talk all of those activities are motivated by values they are not told what to do they are motivated by values and the values define how they behave hallelujah as a nation, we have constitutions. Unfortunately, only the judiciary understands it. I don't know about you, but I'm not sure that I'm aware of many, many things. You just know that if you step into any trouble, you will know you are wrong when you get to court. I'm not being sarcastic. It, that, is a, it, that is very disturbing. Are we together now? Values. When you want to teach people how to drive, among the many things you teach them is not just how to move the car. You teach them various signs and what they mean. Is that true? That when you see a red light, it means stop. When you see a green light, you can go. When you see this, when you see that, you must have values as a person, values as a nation. Some of the greatest nations in the world are as strong because of their policies. The kinds of policies, the policies that protect human life, the policies that protect health, the policies that sit with that children are preserved, animals are preserved, the ecosystem is preserved. In Africa, we largely have values or we, we seldom have values. And where we have it, the average person is not aware. So we are rule breakers by default. You doubt me, stand on the street for five minutes. And watch what happens everybody does what he pleases because there is no code there is nothing that governs our operation and it's the same thing in homes a child gets up he returns back 12 midnight and the child is 12 years old and there is nobody in the house to ask the child where are you coming from whether he came back from stealing from killing from destruction it doesn't matter are we together now this is how people grow in families and become a pain to society. A child of seven years just says, Daddy, I'm going. And he comes back after three days. Ah, you are back? Okay, go and take your bath. There's food for you. What does that mean? I hope you know that every armed robber came from a home. Every terrorist came from a home. I have taught you here that every national problem was first a community problem that was not addressed. And every community problem was a family problem. When the negligence starts from there, imagine that stubborn child now becoming a governor. Are we together? Yeah. Do you know as you climb the ladder in organizations, you see a greater sense of decorum and organization. Enter a bank, for instance, and you find out that at the lower levels, you may even be having an argument with a cashier. But when the head of operations or someone who is in a higher rank comes, you notice there is decorum, there is calmness, because values lift men. 
the Bible says a man, watch this, who does not have, a, how, do, how does the Bible put it now? A man who does not have a watch over his spirit is like a city without walls. It is a risk to have a house whose gate is open and anything can come in and go out. Maybe the first thing that will come in is what can kill you. Are we together? Values. And when I say this, you know, the challenge with the average Nigerian is that we always think and blame government. I submit to you as responsible people, everybody, including the person speaking to you, we must be willing to admit our share of the contribution into what we now call the current Nigeria. Someone is shouting and insulting presidents, governors, insulting us men of God, and the person who is insulting has not paid his children's school fees. He's not even aware how many children he has. Are we together now? And yet they can boldly say, can you imagine Nigeria is spoiling? And the person, they, they just drove his child from school. His wife is there crying. He will return back home not knowing where she got money to cook. And yet he's saying he wants, he, now he says, I want to contest for election. Values. Show me any great leader you admire. Who does not have values for your life, for your organization? Anything goes, you will never go far. Yes, sir. This is not about being a Christian. It is a, a, a principle of greatness. Organizations that have values have longevity. Families that have values have longevity. Churches and individuals that have value have longevity. When it was time to feed the 5,000, he said it's not about food. Put them together in an organized manner. Let them sit down first before they eat food. That way we can detect wastage. Hallelujah. Values. Some of us with all due respect, we do not have values for our life. You don't know what to watch and what not to watch. Anything your eyes stumbles upon, it is welcome. Ask Solomon. You've, you've read about Solomon's life in Ecclesiastes. He said, everything my eyes saw is the reason why people do not become great. No values. How much money do I save when it comes for me? How much do I use? It doesn't matter. Once I touch my pocket and I see 10,000, it must finish. To God be the glory. God has sent it. Apostle prophesied money came. Values. Anybody can just invite you and say, are you free? You will say yes. Refer to point one. Lack of vision. If you say yes to everything, it means you are going nowhere. Something about where you are going should keep you awake in the night that you are not able to sleep. Visionary people watch time. Time will pass. You will find out it was 3 o'clock. Check back and it's 10 p.m. You will not even know when time flies because you are focusing on building yourself I reject the spirit of idleness from your life in the name of Jesus Christ that is the foundation for things like gossip and stories because of idleness ah, I need to give you Jesus you don't know what is happening in Nigeria now I'm the minister of information no salary for it no reward for it how nations become great values Watch this. I wrote something here. Crime, corruption, laziness, entitlement mentality. They are not just evil actions. They are products of a mindset. Let me repeat myself. Crime, corruption, what you call it, laziness, and entitlement mentality. They are not just evil actions. They are products of a mindset. There is a belief system that produces those kinds of things. When someone goes to steal, he's not just going to steal because he wants to steal. There is something he has believed about himself that by himself with the dignity of labor, he cannot rise. Similarly, love, respect, diligence, productivity, responsibility are also not just good actions i'll take it again they are also products of beliefs that means when you see a young man a young woman when you see a man of god when you see whoever you see them respectful diligent loving productive and responsible it didn't come by default 
Those actions are products of a belief system. So crime, the crime that has plagued the Nigerian, African and global society, corruption, laziness, entitlement mentality, all of these things are product, products of a mindset. To cure them will not come by advising. You need a re-engineering of people's orientation. There are people today who believe that every rich man owes them. They see your car, they can curse you as you are passing and say it is our money. Someone sold that idea. Remember what happened to Eve when God appeared and, and said he came in the cool of the day. Adam, where are you? He said, I heard your voice, but I hid because I was naked. He said, who told you? You've given your ears to another influence. Hallelujah. Nations become great when they have clearly defined values and build systems that re-engineer the minds of the citizens with respect to those values. This is true for churches. This is true for organizations. It's true for families. Let me give you an instance. I know this may apply to many people. Remember growing up as children, you were taught that if they gave you a gift, you would hand it over to your mother in the presence of the visitor. Remember that? Give an average small child something now. He will slap the hand that tries to come and collect it. And then parents say, it doesn't matter, they are just children. And they keep growing like that. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, yes, sir. Are we learning? Respect. We were taught to greet people, no matter who you are, no matter how tall you are. You see elderly people, you greet them. This is not an issue of culture. It is why God opened doors for people. Today you see people calling you, you calling their grandmother by their first name. What does that mean? The moment you allow the spirit of it does not matter, come to your life, your company, your family, you can be sure it will destroy your potential for greatness. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. We have eroded values of respect, values of diligence, productivity. With all due respect, you can see a young man today, 45 years, 50 years, he's still in his widow's, widowed mother or, or a widower father's home, arguing for space. I need a room, you know I'm not a child again. Then go out. You come back after two weeks irresponsibly drunk and you are back to the home my food please some even beat their parents and you know the strange thing is that when these things happen we still say it does not matter a young lady of 12 13 18 years leaves the home and by evening she's coming back with two million naira cash and nobody's asking her where are you coming from she doesn't have to do anything bad, but she should explain. Even if it's breakthrough, let's give the thanksgiving together. Am I right on that? If it is from God, what are you afraid of? Listen, listen. I want you, I want you, to, I want you to buy into my passion tonight. This is not only true for Nigeria and Africa. It is to help us reorder our lives. And for many of us family people here, this may be a call to go back and re-examine what you are building so that you don't build what will kill you tomorrow. Hallelujah. Values. There must be something that puts limits and boundaries to your life. What time do you wake up in the morning? What time do you go to bed? Is there a disciplinary system in your life when you sleep for no reason for the whole day? Or you just forgive yourself and say, no problem. After all. I made up my mind that I would never be irresponsible. Never be irresponsible. The word responsibility comes from the word responsive. By the privilege of God's grace, and I say this with all due respect, I have told you here, I've had the honor of raising and training many children and many families. And can I tell you the truth? Some of these families, their fathers are still alive. 
and yet I have never seen them for more than a decade. They have never tried to, who is the person who has been paying my children's school fees? Who is the person who has been paying the house rent? That's why we said, I receive, I manifest. Don't sing it, listen. Your power, number two. Your wisdom. Are we together? Remember the song? I manifest what? Your power and your wisdom. 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 Values. Say in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to put my life in order. Say it again in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to put my life in order. By this teaching, some of you need to lovingly cut away from certain relationships. If you love your relationships more than your destiny, you are not going far. Don't say we were born on the same day. No, you must have the boldness. You don't have to fight people and insult them. But anybody that becomes a consistent distraction to where you are going, for the sake of your children, your destiny, you must obtain grace. This emotional blackmail that has destroyed people on their pathway to greatness, we are all from the same village. What does that mean? Oh, we used to play ball together as children. Wonderful. What does that mean? Anybody that becomes an antagonist to where you are going, you must find a way of keeping them at bay for the sake of where you are going and the people who will be implicated by where you are going. Say values. Do you know not every money is collectible? We are teaching values here. There are some of you, once someone puts his hand in his pocket, you are bringing your hand. There are things, as a man of God, not every seed is worth collecting. There are seeds that when you collect it, it's as if you have, you have sold your birthright. People have given me gifts today. I have collected some, but there are some I know by wisdom or sometimes by the instruction of the Spirit that this is not the time for collection. That was the mistake of Gehazi. Until he became leprous. Is this a time to collect this now? Values. As a man of God, there are people you need to go and pray for. And as soon as you pray for them, you share the grace, you tell them, thank you, sir. May God bless you, I'm leaving. Ah, no, no, man of God, stay. <clears throat> Sometimes you just need to say thank you. You preserve your honor when you do certain things. Are we together now? Yes. As a man of God, for instance, you don't go around harassing your people and saying, do you know what? My birthday is tomorrow. You bring one million. You bring two million. Now, we all do respect. You don't do that and then say, may God bless you. I carry the prosperity anointing. How in the world do they believe that? The ability to put restraint on your life is a major revealer of the kinds of values that you have. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till my nation see Jesus lifted up, his exalted. There are people today who respect certain men of God, certain businessmen. Do you know why? Because they have seen the ability to, to, to express restraint. Restraint. Do you know how many people I've met in my life who say, Apostle, you have blessed me. Please, what can I do for you? And these are wealthy and blessed people. And these are not jokers. These are people that if you mention anything within their power, they will do it. You see, the, you know the power of restraint in the presence of opportunities. Hallelujah. I made up my mind in the name of Jesus Christ that I will never go to any member and harass them. Watch this. Harass them and ask all kinds of questions and say, please, what is God saying? Did God tell you to buy me a car? You didn't call me to ministry. If I need a car, I'll go and ask the one who sent me. God did not call 
you to, me to be a burden to you. I, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong in giving and all of that. I have told you, when people see you as a visionary leader who has standards, give them room, they will, they will surprise you by themselves. Let me tell you sincerely, it is also the reason why you find many platforms, including churches, not have growth. Because nobody will carry his wife and children and their destinies and come and sit under your leadership when you are not a person of vision and you don't have standards. They know it's a risk. What happens when you know that woman is a millionaire? What happens when you know that person is a billionaire? There are many wealthy people today who don't go to church because if we are ever aware they are there, that's the beginning of their trouble. I want to see you personally. There's a prophetic word unique to you. Number three, how nations, people, families become great. Are you ready for number three? The third key that is responsible for building nations to greatness is called education. Write it down, please. Education. No nation can be great if it does not respect the power of education. Let me define for you what I call an educated person. Because there are many people who went to school but are not educated. When I talk about education, in addition to going to school, this is what an educated person means in my world. The ability to read, the ability to write, the ability to communicate effectively. Please underline that one. The ability to read, write, communicate effectively, think constructively, and then use the knowledge acquired as a tool to best solutions. This is an educated person. Let me take it again. That to be educated means you have the ability to read. I didn't say read English. The ability to write. I didn't say write English. The ability to communicate effectively. One of the major indices to measure an educated person is that you have trained your intellectual faculty to be able to communicate your thoughts and your ideas effectively. If that does not happen to you, you are greatly disadvantaged, even if you went to school. Because the world thrives on your ability to transfer thoughts. And you must master the art of transferring your thoughts so that your audience receive it as intended. There are many, many people who went to school but did not get educated. The ability to read, the ability to write, the ability to communicate effectively, the ability to think constructively. The essence of secular education is to prime your creativity. When you do your MSc, it's called Masters. When you do PhD, it's supposed to prime your creativity so that intuitively you can be presented with a set of complicated things and there is a thought line. You have trained your mind already to approach life from a certain way. And then the ability to use knowledge as a tool to better solutions. This is what we lack in Africa. We brag a lot about education. But I can tell you, secular education is wonderful. But it, it, systems, we need to review our strategy. You find someone who was educated, respectfully speaking, someone in, somewhere in Africa, and bring other people across the world. Maybe they even study the same course. When they sit down, they will not be able to talk. Because one has not been trained to think effectively, to communicate their ideas even when they are right you ask them okay so how do we make this work and they are at a loss the knowledge of physics chemistry mathematics biology and everything in between does not automatically make you educated priming your creativity your ability to communicate that intuitiveness this was the whole idea of being educated. It still remains so. So we must be able to trust God to see the power of education. There are many brilliant people today who are gifted, but they are poor communicators. In the presence of opportunities, they fall like a pack of cards because they do not know how to communicate their thoughts and their ideas. 
One of the things I've seen with developed nations is that they have mastered a profound ability to sell themselves, to communicate their ideas. They can bring a point that does not make sense, but by the time they are done speaking to you, you will sign without knowing. And that's what has brought Africa to the kind of bondage we're in. So people say a lot of things, they give you statistical presentations, and by the time they are done, they now say sign here. And then we sign. And then at the end of it, we realize what did he even say as the second point while I was signing? That if this does not happen, we remain slaves for 30 years. You signed. There is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty. Can I tell you this? Don't brag around just moving and saying, I'm a graduate. Go and begin to reinvent yourself to suit today's world. Sit down and learn communication as a planned discipline. Did you hear what I'm saying? Yes. Go and get materials from master communicators. Don't, you are a man of God. You are sent to transfer thoughts to people. I'm speaking right now and there are people connecting from across the globe. From different cultures, different levels or experiences and expertise and all of that. And you are supposed to transfer this idea to them. Let's reject laziness. Don't keep your certificate and saying, I, I studied mathematics, I studied this, there's no job for me. Can I tell you, there are people today who is not what they studied that they are practicing. They went to reinvent themselves. They became communicators. They, they are the think tanks behind many conglomerates. They can earn somebody's one year salary in one week because of the, the health of their minds. Please lay your hands on your head. Say in the name of Jesus, I cause illiteracy. One more time, say in the name of Jesus, I cause illiteracy. There are many people who did not have the opportunity to have secular education as we call it. But these people went to reinvent themselves to learn how to read, to learn how to write, to learn how to think. In primary school, elementary studies, there's something they taught you called quantitative reasoning. Remember that? And verbal reasoning. The intent was to prime your creativity. Unfortunately, I pray that God will help us. That's why some of you need to build schools. And I release that grace upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Quality schools, education, education. Is someone getting blessed? Now listen, I wrote something here. In Daniel chapter 1, give us 3 and 4, then we jump to 17. Watch this. Watch what the Bible says. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel. Remember, they were in captivity now. Of the king's seed and of the princes. What kind of men? Verse 4. Children in whom there was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom, cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had an ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Go to verse 17. The king is selecting among the eunuchs people who would serve him, who he would later promote to man the political affairs of the then Babylon. And he said, in selecting these people, do not just choose for want of word, some dummies or some boys, there are standards. Search for them. Find people who have primed their intelligence and their creativity so that we do not waste our investment on these people. Go to verse 17, Daniel 1. And as for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all the visions and dreams. 18. It says, now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in. And the prince of the eunuchs brought them before Nebuchadnezzar. 19. The Bible says, and the king communed with them. That means he was not a dull king. He communed with them, testing their understanding. And among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. When you are praying for favor, God lift me. Take me to Aso Rock. Connect me to United Nations. I want to work with UNICEF. Don't just pray and fast. Realize that the people are not looking for liabilities. 
is one thing to be a graduate is another thing to be employable then it's another thing to be an asset 20 in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them he found them 10 times better than all the magicians can you imagine astrologers that were in all his realm as a result 21 the bible says daniel continued even to the first year of king cyrus do you know what that meant that even when nebuchadnezzar had died they could not replace daniel may you be so irreplaceable in the name of jesus christ that the church the company would look at you and say in all fairness do you know in the presence of competence certain prejudices like tribe gender become of non-effect when you see people saying are you Igbo or yoruba i tell you in most instances is because your competence has not bailed you out there is a level of competence you get to people will excuse any other limitation I have prayed for people who work in corporations today and they work among people who are very very they may have certain mentality that is not good and yet they have we have people today africans nigerians heading um political spheres even in the united states i've had the privilege of meeting some of them they are not dummies education the ability to write the ability to read the ability to communicate effectively i'm giving you this assignment under god if you have a problem with communication go and labor in the spirit there are online courses instead of gossiping online use the same time get a course and sit down learn from master communicators the world that is evolving now will have no place for people who do not know how to articulate their ideas intelligently you will thank me for what you are learning Nigeria, let's learn how to communicate our ideas. We travel to go and attract investments and we return empty-handed. Do you know why? Because we are not lying, but we, we, we are still at, at the level of infancy as far as communicating our ideas are concerned. I met a gentleman one time who had some program. He's currently doing some program with the United Arab Emirates. And they gave this gentleman, I think, I hope I'm right, it's not less than 50 million dollars and i asked him what did you tell them because these guys are not stupid people they've been business veterans for a long time what kind of idea did you propose that as a young boy as you are in your early 20s that these people did not have the fear to trust you with that kind of money it's true that ideas rule the world even in communicating your christian faith it's important Listen, when you want to become a good communicator, there are two things you need. One is utterance, the other is oratory. Utterance is a spiritual quality. It comes from God. The ability to speak so that anybody, regardless their level of intellectual um, level, they can understand you. That is utterance. But you need oratory. The ability to use words as a tool to transfer thoughts. It's a learnable skill. Learn it. People families nations become great on the strength of their ability to think intuitively and to communicate effectively many men of god cannot be called to non-church board meetings to have the opportunity to speak i had the honor to speak a few months ago in the world conference of the full gospel businessmen fellowship this this is these are the the the, the a, a beehive of some of the business authorities around the world from across the globe now you don't come in the midst of this kind of people and speak a lot of confusion and waste your time you're speaking to people who own conglomerates. These are intelligent people. Now you want to transfer thoughts that become... Some of those guys have business schools. They train executives. They train nations. Now they come to submit to you in the name of a preacher. I made up my mind in the name of Jesus that I will continue to improve my self-building capacity. That my bankruptcy of knowledge will never bring shame to the name of Jesus, nor the people who I stand to represent. And this has been my commitment and it remains so. Education. A nation that does not train their people to think. A nation that does not train their people to communicate effectively. A nation that does not help people to see knowledge as a tool 
Knowledge is not an investment until it can be used as a tool to provide solution. You go to our school today and the average person just wants to finish. He does not care whether he's understanding or not. Just write exams, make sure you pass. If you are lucky and the questions you studied came, then you pass and move. Ask an average graduate to write you an employment letter and you almost want to cry. He will write the letter as if he's sending a text to his friend. You as you. I as I. No comma, no full stop, no presentation. Then we return back to church and say, the devil is fighting me. I pray for people, but I'm showing you that any nation that does not educate its people, it will take more than the secular mainstream institutions to educate people. You must be determined to educate yourself. Take responsibility. Give yourself a target that as a CEO, I will stop bragging and saying I'm a CEO. I'm a man of God. Why are people not inviting me even though I am anointed? It's because they discern that you have the anointing. But the truth is that the kind of demography they want you to speak to, you do not have that. You have not primed your understanding to communicate effectively. There are preachers who cannot go beyond the shores of Nigeria. They cannot communicate thoughts to be able to meet a people of different cultures. I told you it is a learned ability. One more time, please, gently lay your hands on your head and say, I rebuke illiteracy. Give yourself an assignment. Wake up in the morning. Go online by the grace of God. This is, we, we are proposing a new Nigeria, a new family, a new you. It will happen when you make up your mind to be educated. Number four. Hmm. Are you ready for number four? The fourth key that is responsible for transforming people, families, nations to become great is leadership. Write it down, please. Leadership. Let's hurry up so we can pray for Nigeria. Leadership, my God. What is leadership? This definition came many years ago. I was doing a little training for a group of people in Ghana. And I decided to come up with this definition on leadership. And it's remained my most valued definition of leadership till date. Watch this. Leadership, I define it here as the ability to coordinate human and material resources so as to achieve a common and predefined goal. Leadership is the ability to coordinate the ability to coordinate human and material resources. Very important. Everybody at a point in your life, you will have the opportunity to have access to human resources and material resources. And you must learn the ability to put human and material resources together so that you achieve predefined goals. We call it leadership. The ability again to coordinate human and material resources so as to achieve a common and a predefined goal. I submit to you with every sense of responsibility that this is grossly lacking in Nigeria and in Africa. There needs to be an emergence of leaders. Leadership is not a title. Leadership is not a vocation. It's a mentality. The ability to coordinate human resources, material resources, and use it to achieve goals. Any nation that does not know how to do that can have raw materials like we have in Nigeria. We have 200 billion people in Nigeria, the most populous nation in Africa. We are sitting in the midst of vast resources, but we lack the ability to coordinate human and material resources to achieve goals. A dear man of God or a dear man really, he, he served in one of the governments in this nation and he was telling me this story that they were in Israel and they had the opportunity to talk with the prime minister. And the prime minister told them that Israel, being a desert land, that the food that Israel will eat for the next 15 years is already on ground. 15 years on ground. The Israelis built a technology that, 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 is able to produce vegetables in 21 days exactly hallelujah when we say you are a farmer in nigeria 
people run away and say, don't insult me. Farmers abroad own private jets, control economies, because there is a mentality. If I say NMPC, aha, uh -huh, now you are talking. Federal government job. Farmers say, no, I reject that spirit. You see that now? It's a mentality. Leadership, ladies and gentlemen, must be taught if I have the opportunity to contribute to the educational curriculum of Nigeria, there are three courses that must be introduced. Number one, morality and conscience. Number two, leadership. Number three, finance. It will not start in the university. It will start from primary school. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't, don't raise educated rebels. You must start inculcating moral values. And this is not just with a bias to the Christian faith. It is how nations become great. Leadership. Leadership. It is leadership when you see a piece of paper on the ground and you pick it. You are leaving that place better than you met it. That is a leader. It is leadership to be thoughtful about your family. Have you eaten? My wife, have you eaten? My children, have you eaten? It is leadership to know that your wife is nine months pregnant and start preparing from when you know. And don't say, I already rejected CS from beginning. Why are they saying CS now? Nine months. Are you seeing the lack of leadership? It is lack of leadership for your children to come. You already know a new time is starting and you don't put the school fees together. Yet you are donating five million in a church because you want a name. And yet your children cannot go back to school. If you come here and you, if I know you are not taking care of your children and you bring 10 million, I will hold it, pray on it, lay hands on your head and give you back the money and say, go and pay the school fees of your children. Hallelujah. Leadership. I have profound respect for leaders because the Bible says, strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. There is a serious leadership deficiency in this nation. There are many rulers. There are many spearheaders. There are many ambitious people heading organizations and that includes ministries, but there are few leaders. A leader is a shepherd and he will lay down his life for his sheep. No leader will manipulate the people that God has put. As a man of God, you manipulate your people, take advantage of them, you are not a leader. The ability to coordinate, the ability to harness and coordinate human and material resources. And leadership starts from you. Be the first follower of your own philosophies. Mm. If you are with me, say amen. amen. Koinonia is quiet tonight. I hope Nigeria is not quiet. Leadership. Watch this. I wrote here, structures must be put in place for leadership development across all age ranges, both formal and informal. As a man of God, I take responsibility to train our leaders every once and again. It's not enough that they're anointed. They must be leaders. We come from various backgrounds and we run our lives based on the templates that we saw those before us using. Leadership brings you to that common ground where you are able to pick very wonderful and positive traits and now use it. When you see a leader, a leader does not have to say, I'm a leader. It's a mentality, a mentality of love, care, responsibility, productivity. That is leadership. Nigeria needs leaders, I, I propose to you. Nigeria needs to begin, can I tell you, with every respect, due respect for the generations that are from 60 years and above i want to encourage the generation of elderly people both political economic and spiritual in nigeria we must start reaching for the younger generations to train them this is this gap in knowledge is what destroys nations so you find a generation evolved that does not know pharaoh from a spiritual standpoint now you can count how many of the fathers of faith in america are alive now in the next 10 to 20 years, the truth is that they are going to go. I know we like to claim longevity and I believe it, but the truth is according to the course of life, they will go. 
in Nigeria here. Thank God for the initiatives that many of our fathers are doing, like building universities and leadership institutes to help install the mindsets that made them great. Perhaps someone is here. God has called you to be a leader and to spearhead leadership. And now you are about to drop your passion for leadership because you want to be a man of God on the pulpit. Because they've told you if you're a man of God, you easily get money. You try to be a man of God for one year and you will run and leave that mic on the pulpit and go back to your leadership. Stay where God has called you and thrive. Stay where God has called you and thrive. Be a leader indeed. Some of you here, by reason of what you are hearing, you will be setting up leadership institutes to teach people, raise visionary leaders. You would think that Jesus was just looking for spiritual people. In selecting those who would be his disciples, then apostles, did you know that he was looking for leaders? He never called one scribe and one Pharisee to be part of his disciple. He saw Peter and the way he was responsible in his fishing business. He said, no, if you are good in your fishing, you'll be good over men. And he handpicked all these people, fasted and prayed all night and chose leaders indeed. And the vision did not die in their hands because they were leaders. I can be a man of God, but a bad leader. Just because you are kind and sincere, does not automatically transit you to a leader. People ask whether leaders are born or leaders are made. Leadership potential can be seen in people at birth, but every generational leader, serious leader, is made, not born. You train yourself to see life in a certain way and structure your life, structure your organization, leadership. Can I give you number five? how nations become great are you ready the fifth key that is responsible for transiting any nation any individual any family any organization to become great is called economic empowerment economic empowerment there is no nation that becomes great when and if it does not contend for economic empowerment and you want to listen to what i have to say here i said here no nation can be economically emancipated with a dependency mentality no nation can be economically emancipated with a dependency mentality what does that mean depending on government depending on luck depending on superstition for your economic emancipation. Many people in Africa and Nigeria, can I tell you, and, and I say this with every sense of responsibility, believing that the government of any nation, including Nigeria, will be responsible for your economic empowerment is a joke. I don't care what government is in power, what political party. You study from a standpoint of leadership and economics. There is no great nation that became great through government. Every great nation is empowered economically through its private sector. Every great nation is private sector driven. The assignment of government is not to make you rich, is to create an enabling environment where all kinds of healthy activities leading towards the growth of that nation happens. A dependency mentality will destroy Africa. When I was teaching about inheritance here, I taught you that there are many young men who have failed with their lives and they have refused to make efforts to be great. They are waiting and even praying for their parents to die because they found out that there's some land somewhere in Maitama and that that land is 150 million and the gentleman has been praying, wouldn't this man die? I heard the other day he has high blood pressure and he's saying he has recovered. Do you know that in many circles in Africa, once people die, it's not even the burial that is the issue. The arguments that start from day one, as if everybody was praying and hoping for the person to die. I made up my mind right from when I was way younger than this, that in the name of Jesus, I would never live my life trying to say, oh, let my parents have the tea and bread and so that you, what kind of a life is that? And let me tell you something, it is a cause 
to let your children start from the ground. Not with what you are hearing. Make up your mind that my children will never have to start from the ground again. No matter the price I have to pay. It is selfish to make decisions today that you do not think of the consequences to your children and your children's children. Tonight's teaching is hard, but just endure it. You will tell me thank you. In the name of Jesus, happy independence. Yes, sir. This is what love can do. Insist that you must be transformed. Someone is listening to me now. Who needs this message? Perhaps some politician somewhere listening to me. Who needs this message? Don't, don't carry sirens and move around with no productivity. No. Do you know? Hate poverty as a revelation. Don't like poverty. It will destroy you. It will make you a slave. This is not about prosperity. I've taught you. There is a balanced communication. I will never be poor. My children will never be poor. Koinonia will never be poor. Under my watch, you will never be poor. I will never raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant. You must also be economically vibrant. A nation that is not economically emancipated will remain slaves and will transfer that slavery to the children. With all due respect, there are, for many of you who are widely traveled, there are places that when you go to and you show a green passport, be prepared for embarrassment. Just start saying in the name of Jesus, the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, because of the kind of embarrassment you will receive there. Everybody begins to suspect you. What is in your bag? Open it. Let us check it. Turn around. Turn around again. Turn around the third time. Simply because in our lifetime we will change it. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is a Nigeria that is imagined that in the name of Jesus, your, the passport that you hold. Hallelujah. Abba. Just because you were born in Nigeria, embarrassment everywhere around the airport. No, you must obtain grace in the name of Jesus Christ. And I say this by the power that raised Christ from the dead. God is raising a people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God is raising a people. This is why there are ambassadors that will redeem the image of Nigeria. Here I'm saying it prophetically. God is raising us all as ambassadors. That someone will look at you and say, before I met you, I've had a bad image about Nigeria, but no more. No more. No more. I, I usually would not give Nigerians job, but when I listened to your message, I made up my mind that my company will leave a quota for 1,000 Nigerians. We need to redefine the image of this nation, redefine the narrative. Not everybody is a thief. Not everybody is a crook. Not everybody is corrupt. Not everybody is Yahoo. Not everybody is 419. There are people today, as a young man, when you are empowered economically, people just look at you and say, Kai, this guy, this kind of money, who knows? Maybe you are a ritual killer. There are ambassadors that God is sending. I'm telling you this. And you are part of these ambassadors. You must believe it. That because of your presence and what you stand for, kings and ambassadors, embassies will say, anytime you need any, come through me. Once you bring somebody through me, they will stamp their visa because I trust you. I hope you know that integrity is capital. There are people today who have not been able to go and see their families for four or five years because they just suspect that perhaps they are going to do drugs. I have prayed for many people. Nigeria, 63 years, 60 years as a federal republic, 109 years from our amalgamation. We have come of age. We need to start redeeming the image of this nation. Running away is not how to redeem the image. We will stay and clean it up. We will first take responsibility. Now, there's nothing wrong in traveling. If that is your destiny. But some of us have chosen that in our lifetime, we will see the new Nigeria. Yeah. Hallelujah. That someone hands over something and is trying to bribe you. And you hold both the hand and the money. 
and say, I don't condemn you, but let me show you a lesson. Not every Nigerian is corrupt. You did this, I bless you, put your money back and learn the lesson. There are people in this nation who fear God. God bless you, leave my office. Once you do that, the person goes back with an orientation. Not everybody is a thief, I repeat. Not every man of God is a crook. Not everybody collected power from, from a, um, um, what, what do they call it now? Those who, whoever it is, what shrine that gives power? Don't generalize it. There's a very negative image people have to the point that you see people, their green passport, they now carry a black cover and cover anything that can cover so that, no, we are proud Nigerians. We are not ashamed. Listen, listen to me. There is a Nigeria that is rising and government alone cannot do it. This is where the emergence of saviors, the Bible says saviors shall arise from Zion and they shall judge the Mount of Esau. Hallelujah. And we thank God for the little contribution that God is helping us to make. As we travel around the nations, we are not just going as preachers, we are going as ambassadors, first of the kingdom, but also restoring the image of this nation. Nigeria has great people. I know that there are Nigerians doing drugs around the world, but not everybody is a drug baron. There are people who fear God. Not everybody's one naira came from occultism. No. One thing we ask of you, one thing that we desire, that as we worship you, Lord, come and change our lives. One thing we ask of you, one thing that we desire, that as we worship you, Lord, come and change our lives. I remember one of us here when he came and showed me the blueprint for the leadership university he's setting up in this nation. I was happy and excited. I said, that's right. That's right. And then economic empowerment. I have seen what poverty can do to a family. Our children that are prostituting, do you go and be a prostitute with a poor man? How much will he give you? Remember our Delilah story? When you are economically incapacitated, I am telling you, listen, do not let your child look at you one day and say, Daddy, I love you, but may I never be like you. Mommy, I love you, but may I never be like you. You are the reason for my pain. I have a past today I'm ashamed to tell people, and it was because of your irresponsibility. When Kofi Annan was UN Secretary General, he made a statement that I want to make reference to. It was during Children's Day. He came up and he said, let our children not suffer the consequences of our carelessness. As for me, I've made up my mind to be economically empowered for myself and for the work of the kingdom. If you don't believe in it, save Johnny. May your revelation bail you out when you are in the lion's den. But as for me, I have made up my mind. I know what it means to be in a realm of lack and incapacitation. And I know what it means to have the privilege to be able to be a blessing. The choice is yours. But as far as I'm alive and as far as I have the privilege of leading this ministry, I can tell you, nobody will climb this altar to advocate poverty no if poverty were good some of it would be in the presence of god because everything in his presence reflects glory among the many things mentioned in his presence we do not see poverty there africa has embraced a theology that has brought look at many of our young men now you see it's easy to condemn these guys and say oh they are into yahoo they are into prostitution most times we address the symptoms and we don't go to the root everybody wants to have a sense of destiny did you hear what i said every young man wants to get to a point in his life where he knows i have taught you six fundamental needs of every man number one security number two variety number three love and acceptance number four significance number five growth number six 
impact and contribution. And every time people feel left out of life and destiny, they will invent any formula. All this talk we are saying, stop Yahoo and stop. I will never, never promote all those demonic things. But I'm saying we are addressing symptoms. By the time a lady is watching her mother die and she needs 9.5 million naira to go and send her to India for treatment, in the presence of pain, anything looks like an option to be considered. Are we together? Let me challenge anybody here. If you don't have a job, start working on yourself. Don't sit down and say the government is not giving me a job. The government cannot employ everybody. Let me just tell you the truth. It does not matter what government is in power. The government cannot give everybody a job. And corporations right now want to maximize profit. So if they can downsize 50 people and bring in IT, apps, and all kinds of technological advantages to increase, the, don't blame them. We need innovation. We need intelligence. We need to sell the idea of productivity and investments. Two things that the young people must learn in Nigeria. The power and the value of productivity. I am gifted is not productivity. Productivity. I am a graduate is not productivity. Are we together? I met a woman in Lagos. I've shared the story here. This woman got into White House and all her business is to sell, we call it in Nigeria, bean cake, moi moi. That's what took her to the White House. She's met the who and who's of the nations because of that. What God has placed in your hand, if you can take it serious, why should I believe in something you don't even believe in yourself? There are people today who have built houses frying a kara. I know you laugh at them. They package it well and what you will buy for 100 naira, you now buy for 3,000 because they gave it value. That's what productivity is. There are people here, the 2 million naira you wasted, you can use it to dig a, a borehole and start a bottled water company. The resources you need are there. Water will never, never, based on the Maslow theory of needs, the hierarchy of needs, it will be an eternal demand. Let's wake up as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The church is supposed to help society. We are not a burden to Nigeria. We are contributors to the health and the strength of, nation, of nations. Hallelujah. Reject laziness. That when you come to church, you are supposed to be taught like this and then grace is released over you. But when that grace is released over you, you now go back and put that to work. Try it and fail. It is more honorable to fail in dignity and diligence than to sit down waiting for someone to give you money. Apostle, I want to do it, but I did my calculation. I need somebody to give me 10 million. You are joking. You think the world is that free? 10 million out of nowhere? If I were not a preacher, if I were not a preacher, I would never sit down and watch myself in poverty and lack. No. That anything my hands finds provided is proscriptor and it does not destroy lives. It does not destroy properties with all humility. I gave you an, I think, I don't know if I said it here. Someone I was going to add, you know, to my security men. And then one of them came, a fine young man. I didn't know he was a graduate, true story. When this gentleman came, I looked at him. I said, no, 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 no. Tell, tell me about yourself. He said, I'm a graduate. It's just that I didn't have the opportunity to get a job. So I decided that instead of sitting idle, let me go and be trained. And I said, wow, this is serious. I now told him, and I'm saying it with all humility, not just to brag. I told him, I said, my friend, because you did this as a graduate, instead of going to steal, I'm going to send you to go and do your masters and I will give you money to start business. You will not be a security in my house. Now, listen, that gentleman today has gone, but because he was humble enough, the arrogance of this generation in the midst of nothing, you get a job of 50,000, you say 50,000 in Abuja, God forbid, if it's not 500,000 and God says you are not ready to rise, you are not ready to rise. Oh, my birthday, I need 500,000 as a budget. No. 
economic empowerment. When you wear tomorrow's clothes today, you will be naked tomorrow. When you eat tomorrow's food today, can I tell you the truth? Please listen. For those of us that God has started placing something in our hand, run away. One of the things I learned with all due respect in this city is that God needs to deliver this city from a fake life. Everybody wants to show we have arrived. If you are not there, you are not there. Just sit down and grow patiently. You see someone in a restaurant eating 200,000 and that's all the person has in his account. And everybody in that place is not your age mate economically. It's a message by God. Flying business class without a job. Getting into a choice hotel and celebrating birthdays. Gathering friends together, burning one, two million. No. The church is the right place to say this. And I'm saying this from a standpoint of love. Can I tell you? Delete wasters from your life. People who are not there when you have money, as soon as money arrives, it's as if there's a spirit that makes them know. Here they come. Tell them I love you, but I listen to apostle and I'm on a journey with determination. Are we together now? Yes. I was going to assist a gentleman one time to marry and then he, 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 the, among the budget, he brought a budget for honeymoon. I said, you are joking. You are joking. You are, you are joking. You think just because a man of God is a giver, we are foolish? No. You are joking. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I hope you get what I'm trying to say. There are people today, if you say you want to help them start out in life, what kind of car will I buy? They will tell you a Jeep. First car. There is an orientation we must, we must trust God for grace. Some of you, even though you are making it remain in that one room, cut your course and keep growing and building so that when you come out of that one room, you don't return back in shame. Are we together now? Don't say all my colleagues have gone. No problem. You start with the dignity of integrity. What can you do with your hand? I will be more than glad to pray and bless you. And perhaps even so into your life. Provided you are serious. Let's, let's, let's not train lazy and irresponsible people in church. And then we keep gathering everything and say in Jesus name. No. I challenge every young man here. Listen. Gentlemen. For the ladies, God bless you, work hard. But for the men, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release grace upon you to be productive. No gentleman in this ministry should have a dependency mentality. No. And if you are here and it's your wife that is feeding you, well, it depends on the situation. But if it's more than three months, four months, you are not serious. You are not serious. Did you hear what I said? I'm not being stupid. You are not serious. There is a grace called favor. Wake up in the name of Jesus Christ and take responsibility. Don't fold your hand and allow your wife pay children's school fees, bring food for you, do a pay rent for you, buy clothes for you. Who paid whose dowry? We'll wrap up soon. But you must hear what I have to say. In the name of Jesus Christ. Save money. You don't have to go for every wedding, every birthday party, be responsible. Instead of spending 100,000, send 20,000 as your seed and watch online. Hallelujah. There are many of us who are parts of clubs and societies that the devil is using as loopholes to destroy our finances. It's not that God has not been faithful, but many of us, this society life, I want to show that I belong. If you are not there, you are not there. You will be there, you can be there. But for God's sake, sit down and grow gradually. Don't get into a house that for the whole year you are palpitating because the rent is not there. Why give yourself that kind of burden? Economic empowerment. 
obtain grace every gentleman here i repeat and koinonia global wherever you are i'm going to pray for you at the end of this meeting let something come upon you go back some of you this night when you go back home don't just go and sleep get a clean sheet of paper and sit down and say my destiny I'm st i will stop being a child from today you can if you are staying with your mother mommy daddy thank you give me the next one year and i'll go out of your house with nobility apostle challenge me in church today i will not go out to play football up morning till night when i don't have the destiny of a sportsman i can go and visit i will play it as leisure when i prosper but for now i will hang my boots and sit down father give me an idea breathe upon me play this song play it till creativity comes upon your spirit and the lord can speak to you and say you know what you have grace for clothes start selling clothes and someone will call you and say you know what there is a store that I'm opening. Can you come and help us? He who is faithful in little. One day you will become a store owner across the globe. Let nothing be too small, provided it is proscripture and it will help you live a life of dignity. It's better to sow Gary with honor. Are we together now? And to go and eat in the table of unbelievers because you are trying to hurry life. I know that some of you see what God has done in our lives today. This is the reason why sometimes we tell our stories. So that people don't think that you were sitting down and someone just gave you one billion and empowered you. It's a lie. Well, maybe it happens so for other men of God. But ladies and gentlemen, there are times God himself delays your growth for the sake of those you will be training. So that you can have a story to tell people. What is around you does not define you. Koinonia, I was holding miracle services and I was using a bike. It was not because of luck. God would not allow me buy a vehicle. My suit was more expensive than the bike I was climbing. You can imagine a crowd of people and here I come with a bike. And I remember warning our protocol department. I said, never inconvenience anybody to try to get their car to come and pick me. If I want to buy a car, there's no car I will not buy. This is an instruction. I wondered for many years why God would make me go through that kind of thing. One day God told me, I want the people learning from your life to know that greatness is not just defined by the things around you. Today you can hear that maybe someone gave a house, someone bought this and you say, ah, they are lucky. Me too, I will go and preach. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see jesus lifted up glorified breathe lord breathe breathe lord breathe breathe upon my life breathe lord breathe breathe lord breathe So ladies and gentlemen, I will be more than willing to pray for you if you are willing to be serious. Some of you, your loved ones have been trying to tell you to be serious. Now God has used this preacher. I've told you that me, I'm both old and new school. Work hard. Be diligent. If someone gives you money, thank God for it and keep it quietly and then keep walking. Keep walking. Lord, I obtain grace. I will farm. I obtain grace. I will buy a deep freezer and start selling drinks. I will start selling drinks. Let the anointing of the Spirit come upon it. One day someone will see you and say, really, I want to, I will buy a franchise for you of an eatery or another company. Number seven, how nations become great. Oh, number six. Okay, let me rush through it. Are you ready? 
The sixth key that brings about the greatness of nations is a robust security architecture. Please write. A robust security architecture. There is no nation that becomes great outside of a robust security architecture. When you call America a great nation, it is not just a great nation because of its citizens alone. It is because of the kind and the quality of security architecture that they have. Hallelujah. One of the ways or one of the basis for valuing a house is security. The kind of security architecture that was programmed in that house. Am I right on that? So when you say this house is $10 million versus this house is $1 million, many times it may not just be the neighborhood. It's because of the kind of security system that was put there. This is particularly for nations. Protecting lives and property is the number one assignment of government. Politically speaking now. Protecting lives and protecting the properties of a citizenry is the primary. Any government that fails to protect lives and fails to protect properties, given ample time, has truly failed. Number two, creating a secure environment will always stimulate growth and it will also bring foreign direct investment. This is true. Nobody will come and invest billions of dollars in any nation for that matter when they feel that their investments are not safe. It is the assignment of government in partnership with law enforcement agencies and of course by extension all citizens to see to it that their localities and their environment remain safe and conducive for growth, conducive for transformation, conducive for development. Hallelujah. I've had the honor of studying great nations. And one of the things that they say when they are attracting investors to their nation is they try to open them up to the kind of security architecture they have. Your data will be protected. Your ambassadors will be protected. Are we together now? Those who are coming to head the, the office, the national office of your company, your corporation will be protected and even your finances will be protected. Security extends to the health of the financial institutions, the health of the judiciary, the health of all the arms of government that are responsible for seeing to it that justice is meted out if and when necessary. No nation becomes great if your security system is porous. I say this with all due respect. I love my nation. I love my nation and I love my leaders. But every time I'm going to the airport, I feel it's like a weight on my chest because you see a long queue. What does it take to digitalize access into the airport? For instance, I say that as a personal concern. You go to several parts in Africa and you don't have to come out and be wasting. It's already programmed. You come there, deductions are made, the lift goes and you go in. But in Nigeria, you can miss a flight because someone is bringing change out of that room. And you remain there. Come on, what does it take for God's sake? Some of the people who have built those other nations are Nigerians. What does it take to create a system for God's sake? You get to the airport, you are almost confused sometimes. You don't know where to go to. You keep asking questions and moving around like you are mad. It ought not to be so. It ought not to be so. Something can happen. Security. There are nations where even terrorist groups have uniforms of some of the law enforcement agencies. How do you now trust the person who is standing on the road? Now, I'm not saying this thing. I'm a responsible citizen and we are all putting hands in gloves to make, to bring a solution. But I'm telling you, any nation that desires to be great must pay attention and invest in building a robust, non-politicized security architecture. Are we together? Yeah. That you can lie down and sleep and know that you can sleep in peace. When you hear the sound of a gun, 
you should know that it's either police or military, not an armed robber. In the name of Jesus Christ, investing, we are here today by the privilege of God's grace. You cannot be holding a meeting with these kinds of, I submit to you, God has given us the intelligence to build a very robust security architecture. All you see is not all that there is. I assure you, I am committed to making sure that by the grace of God, the horse is prepared for battle and safeties of the Lord, but the horse must be responsible for battle. You see, the kind of investment we make in building a responsible security architecture because we love God and we are responsible people. That when you sit down to hear the word of the Lord, you should, be, you should know that you are safe. So we outsource whatever it is within our power to build an intelligent security architecture. Ladies and gentlemen, a nation that does not pay attention, and I thank God for what God is doing. I can tell you that. By privileged information, I can tell you that there is a real revival that is happening within the security architecture of this nation. You take it from me. And it is my prayer that by the grace of God, that God will raise and build a robust security architecture that we know our airports are safe, our ports are safe. Are we together now? Our airspace is safe. Our neighborhoods are safe. You shouldn't leave your house and your heart is palpitating. You're wondering if your children are safe. I've had the opportunity to be part of a few violence cases in Nigeria. And I, it's not a good thing for you to see that kind of thing. When in Joss, many years ago, the crisis that happened, I was right there. I was in town when it started. There was one time a post-election violence that happened in Zaria. I was right there. You do not want to live in an environment of crisis where there is killing. I lay me down and I slept. He says, I wait for the Lord sustain me. So nations become great because of their security architecture. Hallelujah. You pass around the White House, it's about the most protected building on earth. My goodness. The security architecture within that place is, 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 is almost godlike. The level of intelligence that was invested. Maybe this is a revelation for someone that God is saying becoming a security an expert is your destiny. Start now. While you are receiving the grace, don't just shout amen. Trust God for grace. Security doors, security outfits, you become a security consultant. Go and receive certifications and trust God for grace. You are a security expert. I can tell you it's a job that will be needed forever as far as our civilization is concerned. Let me give you number seven. This is my happy independence gift. Finally, all nations become great when they honor spirituality. Now, please listen. All nations become great to the degree to which they honor spirituality. Here's what I said. Spirituality, I wrote here, is the number one influencer of values, morals, and actions. Spirituality, especially in a continent like ours, whether you are a Christian, whether you are a Muslim, whether you are a traditionalist, or whatever faith expression you believe in. I'm speaking generally now to our nation. I'm speaking generally to those who are connecting, whether Christians or not. But it's been proven that spirituality is about the number one influencer of values, morals, and actions. Watch this. People will build values to reflect and honor their spiritual disposition. People will build values to honor and reflect their spiritual disposition. That means if my, I am a child of God, I'm a Christian, I believe in Jesus, the son of the living God. If the Bible teaches me to love, if the Bible teaches me to forgive, if the Bible teaches me to be responsible, you see, in honor to 
the tenets of scripture, I will build a value system that honors my belief. That means we who God has granted the grace to spearhead and influence men in matters of faith, we must be careful the things that we are teaching because people will build their value systems to reflect and honor Jesus or whichever deity we propose to them. When you propose a wicked God who has no problem with killing, who has no problem with maiming, you will find that there can be a side effect. There, there will be a repercussion. Generally speaking, most faith practices promote love, peace, giving, tolerance, forgiveness, responsibility. Most, as much as I know, most faith practices promote love, promote peace. I've studied a bit of world religions. I'll tell you sincerely, a bit of them because of what I do. And even if it's just at the surface, I know that most religions promote or propose love, peace, giving, tolerance, forgiveness, responsibility. This is the role that spirituality has to play. We read about the history of America and we see and know today that among the many factors that has made America this great, is a statement from their founding fathers. In God we trust. In God we trust. A statement that was institutionalized. It was not just an opinion of few people. And as much as we know, the nation has not come out openly to say we have stopped trusting God. So God still honors that covenant. In Africa, we didn't come out to say whether in God we trust, but our lives show that there are many things, many, many altars, and today we are victims of some of these things. I'm praying that one day we can stand as a nation and as a people and also say in God we trust. Trust him to raise our children, trust him to change government, trust him to change leaders, to change their mindset and help them to flee the path of corruption and to be people who are responsible. Can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, every time men seek God, in this case, the God of the Bible, they always will tilt towards a great destiny. It's only a matter of time. Three scriptures and we'll pray for Nigeria. Psalm 33 and verse 12. Media, please help us. Psalm 33 and verse 12. My dear people, please prepare. Someone is going to sing for us the national anthem. Don't worry if you've forgotten it, it will be projected. Stanza 1 and 2. Hallelujah. We're going to sing the national anthem to remind ourselves again that we are responsible believers and we have a role to play in nation building. Here's what the Bible says. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Psalm 95 verse 3, second scripture. It says, for the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. I can speak for myself because I know what Jesus has done in my life. I know what Jesus has done for Koinonia. I know what Jesus can do, will do for Nigeria. Second Chronicles 15, 12 to 15. Hmm. And they entered into a covenant to seek the God of their fathers. Did you see that now? They as a people entered into a covenant to seek the God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. Next verse. That whosoever should not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. Verse 14. And they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting, with trumpets and with cornets. Let's read verse 15 together. Ready? One to read. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire and he was found of them, hallelujah. And the Lord gave them rest. 
This is what Nigeria is looking for. My dear nation, I propose to you the solution. Thank God for government. Thank God for the National Assembly, the Senate. Thank God for the law enforcement agents. But my Bible tells me that except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city, he said the watchmen watch it in vain. There are things only God can do. Did you hear what I said? There are things only God can do. For instance, taking a man from a dunghill and placing him in a place of honor, only God can do that one. There are things only God can do. Turning a murderer called Saul. When James, when I think it was um, um, Stephen was beheaded, I hope you know that Paul was among them. He was among them who were beheading him. Yet he would later become the great apostle. Only Jesus can turn someone who is an arm robber today, are we together now, to become a great blessing tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very robust outreach to prisons. I have been doing this for many years by the privilege of God's grace. We have built a relationship with several prisons and I've had the honor to send gifts and build relationships with their controllers. I can tell you the truth that the prisons sometimes, there are a few times that we wanted to give money to bail out a few people who had been there for a long time. And the controllers told us that some of the people are better off there. Even they themselves don't want to leave because they, have, they don't have any other family. They have built a family there. Where would they get the food to eat? Where would they get all of that? You can be kept behind bars, but bars don't transform. Only the Holy Spirit can transform a person. By the privilege of what I do, I have held the hands of people and midwife their transitions from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God's dear son. In this ministry, there are people who were once occultists, cultists, and today God has transformed them to be signs and wonders. There were people who were once irresponsible people. Today they are spearheading the campaign for responsibility. I can tell you, Nigeria, let us not allow our pain cause us to see God as an interruption to civilization. Any nation can choose to reject God, but by all means and by my plea, not our nation. We are in a delicate season in the history of this nation. We cannot afford to throw God out of the equation. My Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, is that in your Bible? And pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He says, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. No government can heal the land. There are people who are bleeding, bleeding from pain that have been caused by terrorists, bleeding from injustice, bleeding from all kinds of things, deserving of merit. But many have been overthrown by sentiments of all sorts there are many people today who would have gotten certain jobs but people came and said you are not yoruba sorry you will not get the job you are not Igbo, sorry you will not get the job you are not from the north you are not from the middle belt all of these sentiments and biases have put people in a position of disadvantage there is there is such there is a bleeding generation the average young man today is angry by default is the reason why once there is any opportunity to protest you see people come up because there is a, a store of anger only god can bring healing to our land i'm telling you this and if we do not allow that great physician to come and carry nigeria like a patient in ICU and start healing us economically, healing us politically, healing us sociologically, a time will come brothers will kill brothers, sisters will kill sisters. When there was famine in Samaria, mothers ate their children. Let it not repeat itself in our nation. Hallelujah. Today you find out for instance, that a woman dies or a man dies and you find out that all the family members have to go to police station to write statements because nobody is sure who killed who. That is the kind of nation we found ourselves in. 
ladies and gentlemen, we must pray and trust God. And as we sing this national anthem and pray, koinonia as a contribution to the new nigeria that we seek to see we are calling upon the god of heaven to say lord have mercy we declare that we are incapacitated the bible says some would trust in horses some trust in chariots he said but we our education has taken us only so far our security system has taken us only so far the government now you see how much the price of dollar is naira to dollar it is not the fault of any single individual. It is a reality right now that complaining and pointing fingers will not, it is biting everyone. We must take responsibility. Let me tell you what happened when serpents bite. In the Bible, when the serpent was biting the nation of Israel, there was another brazen altar that was lifted. You couldn't run away from those serpents. There were too many. And here's the solution God gave Moses. And this is the solution that I'm proposing to my dear nation, Nigeria. From the presidency, to the legislature, to the judiciary, the executive arm, down to governments and all kinds of people. Can I tell you the truth? I have learned by experience. I don't know what God lifted you, but the one who lifted me is still alive. If he can lift a man, he can lift a nation. Are we together? Yes. Our national anthem is about the most beautiful anthem among all the nations that I know. And it is not because I'm a Nigerian. Believe me, I can see that the hand of God was there in writing our national anthem. You've not seen it in a long time. Once they sing it, don't close your eyes. It's not a worship song. Open your eyes and see what is written. Are we together? Please, when you hear them singing, don't close your eyes. Open your eyes. I want you, there's something I want what you are seeing to do to you. My people, are you ready? No ad lipping, no harmony. Sing it the way it was in primary school. Please, there's something we are trying to achieve. Are we together? Everyone stand. Let it be loud and clear. And then we'll sing it. I don't know why we stop singing stanza two. Go ahead. Project for me our national pledge. I want you to just listen. Look at it. 
if you have stolen our money in this nation don't say this if you are adding to trouble in this nation don't say this if you have made up your mind that you will keep being corrupt don't say this if you make up your mind that you are not going to be a serious person don't say this this is what it says I pledge to Nigeria my country to be faithful loyal and honest to serve Nigeria hold on politicians they should make every politician recites this before putting them in any office and they should recite it before Nigerians to serve Nigeria not with sentiments and biases not with prejudices and a corrupt heart with all my strength to defend her unity and uphold her honor and glory now this is where i want you to shout so help me one more time so one more time so one more time Please let me request everyone, if you can, and you are comfortable with it, I want all of us to go down on our knees to God for this nation in one minute. I'm going to give you the next, if, 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 if you're not able to go down on your knees, that's all right. But for the next five minutes, I'd like you to cry and let your prayer point be Nigeria. Lord arise, go ahead. Pray for the president. Whether you like him or not is not the issue. Pray for the president. Pray for the judicial system. Pray for the governors of our 36 states. If you are not praying, you are an enemy of this country. Go ahead and pray. And if you are following and you are not a Nigerian, today is our Independence Day. Why don't you invest in praying for our nation as you also pray for your nation? Someone cry. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. As we pray. As we pray. of your people oh God as we call on your name oh God as we pray as we pray pray for our military pray for the air force Father, we pray that corruption will die from our nation. Father, we pray, empower our leaders. Give them the hearts to serve truly. Pray for our educational system. That in the name of Jesus Christ, God will raise vibrant people intellectually. Pray for pastors, apostles, bishops regardless what denomination go ahead and pray father show mercy restore order to our churches order to our pulpit that shepherds will love their sheep indeed someone pray don't be tired this is your own gift on the 63rd birthday of this country we call upon you, O God of heaven. You are the ruler of nations, the one who lifts nations. We confess our inabilities, our inadequacies, and we cry for help. Help our government, help our institutions, help our young people, help the elderly, help our families. Koinonia, pray. This is our contribution as a ministry.
pray for the north pray for the south pray for the east pray for the west the hatred that exists among us let Igbo love Yoruba let Yoruba love Hausa let Middle Belt love the South South person go ahead and pray all these demonic satanic sentiments as we pray Koinonia pray that a time will come when your children get admission they will not deny them because of where they come from let this be a Nigerian dream that a time will come a Nigerian passport will almost be like having the certificate of an investment pray 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 that in our lifetime there is a God that makes nations great there is a God that makes nations great we are not a godless people we believe in the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords they cried unto him they looked up to him and their faces were lightened let's take responsibility stop blaming presidency stop blaming politicians stop blaming the judiciary let's take corporate responsibility that I have a role that I've played you have a role that you have played in this current version of Nigeria and that together as responsible citizens God can help us a few more minutes you are not wasting your time you are kneeling for your children maybe not for yourself as you are kneeling I want you to see your children the next 10 years if Christ tarries the next 20 years if Christ tarries that our children will not have to run out of this nation to have good education Lion of the tribe of Judah we present Nigeria before you we present Nigeria before you help us guide us forgive us cleanse us purify us we repent from our pride and arrogance you have made us a giant in Africa we take our place in destiny we take our place in destiny we take our place in destiny hallelujah hallelujah we're wrapping up I want us to pray there are three vices I want us to pray and cause the spirits behind. Number one is this industry called terrorism. Number two is irresponsibility among our young people. Whether translated as prostitution or translated as drugs or translated as internet fraud. Did you know that some of the drug dealers in many nations are Nigerians? young people teenagers some of their parents think they are studying abroad but those young people they keep sending money for building projects to happen and those monies come from trafficking and innocent people have become victims unfortunately this includes men of god this includes politicians that's why i said there is no tell them all of us have to take responsibility we are going to pray Lord, visit this nation and heal our youth. Visit this nation and turn the hearts of our people from these levels of decadence. Go ahead and pray. I see some of you waving Nigerian flag. Don't be ashamed. It's a nation you will be proud of very soon. It's a nation that you will be proud of very soon. Go ahead and pray. Lord, deliver our children from internet fraud. Deliver them in the name of Jesus from blood sacrifices for money. Let our people understand the dignity of labor. Restore this nation. What's that your song on restore? Please sing that song for me in one minute. We're wrapping up. This is our prophetic word for Nigeria. Everything that we 
the name of the Lord. Now you are going to pray for every one of our six geopolitical zones. A Yoruba man should be able to go to Katsina and build a house and live there in peace. An Igbo man should be able to go to Kano or go to Lagos. Are we together now? It is impossible for us to call ourselves a united people with the kind of hatred we have for one another. Oh, you are Yoruba, I hate you. Oh, you are Igbo, I hate you. Oh, you are from the north, I hate you. You are from the middle belt, I hate you. Oh, you are, you are from Maiduguri, you are from Adamawa State, I hate you. Nobody thrives. Listen, when we do this fire for fire thing we are doing, we are still the ones who are going to pay that price. Are we together? When I was growing up, during Salah, Muslims would bring food to our house. We used to play football with people in school. Muslims, Christians, nobody knew the difference. Hallelujah. One of the closest persons to me in Zaria today is a Muslim. He runs a school. When we have the opportunity to sit down, we talk about various things, including faith. During my birthday, he bought a beautiful Bible. He wanted to buy me a Quran and a Torah, but he didn't know what I would think about it. So he sent me a Bible. We have been there for one another. Extremism, whether of a Christian faith or in Islam or in any other religion, is a cancer that must die in this nation. Extremism. There are many people who have been there for one another for 30 years and then one day they just become enemies using the guise of all of When you are sick, you don't ask that it's a Christian who treats you or a Muslim who treats you. Whoever is qualified should treat you. But right now, someone is doing a business and he can fix your house. But simply because he's an Igbo man, he will say, God forbid. An Igbo man will not enter my house. A Yoruba man will not enter my house. Everybody in Nigeria, we came from a family of witchcraft. Everybody has a witch somewhere. Are we together now? There is no family that is immune by default. It's a lie. Where I come from, my people worship masquerades and worship all of these things, the dead. But I do not do so. And God is helping us to spearhead a campaign and drive that satanic thing out of that place. I've traveled by the privilege of God's grace everywhere in this nation. I have studied the cultures. There are cultures that buried people alive. There are cultures that did all kinds of things. Everybody, it is our nation. We are going to pray and say, Lord, restore genuine love one for another. That an Igbo man can sleep on the same bed with a Yoruba man and not suspect what they will do to one another. That a Hausa man can shake hands with someone from the middle belt, someone from the south. We may not agree in everything in terms of faith, but for God's sake, tenants like love, forgiveness. Let it not be that one day your children, your child will get a job where he is the only Christian or Western or Eastern and he will be persecuted simply for where he's coming from. That does not look like the Nigeria we are praying for. Are you ready to pray? Mention the geopolitical zones by yourself and say, Lord, show us mercy. Go ahead and pray. Forgive us. Forgive us for our prejudices, oh God. Forgive us for the hatred we have sold to ourselves, our companies, even churches and children. Forgive us for the tribal sentiments we have used and destroyed the destinies of innocent people. Is someone praying? There are people today who would have gotten jobs, but because of where they came from, they have been punished, retired unjustly, 
we need results in our nation. One minute, we're wrapping up. Remember, when you are praying, you are not just praying for yourself. Yes, sir. Lord, help us. Every geopolitical zone in this nation is a gift to this nation. The north is a gift to this nation. The southwest is a gift to this nation. The southeast is a gift to this nation. The northeast is a gift to this nation. The northwest is a gift to this nation. Mention them. Nobody is an enemy of anybody. Help us, oh God. The sentiments that we have brought that is destroying us and about to tear our lives and this nation apart. Show us mercy. There are preachers who hate themselves because of regional sentiments. There are businessmen who hate themselves because of regional sentiments. You will restore. Hey. You will restore. That's our prayer, Lord. Hey. You will restore. You will restore. That's what we see you doing, oh God. You will restore. Restore our homes, restore our educational systems. You will restore. This is the Nigeria of our dreams. You will restore. One more time. You will restore. Sing restore now. Restore. That's the prophetic word for Nigeria. Everything that was stolen, restore. Everything that was lost, restore. Lord, you will. One more time, together now. Restore. Everything that was lost, restore. Everything that was stolen, restore. Everything that was lost, restore, you will restore. Thank you for your patience. Let me pray. Father, we bow our knees as a global family. We bow our knees as proud Nigerians. We bow our knees as sons and daughters of this beloved continent. And then for many who are sharing in our pain, and also sharing in our destiny. Tonight, oh God, we confess that by ourselves and upon the strength of our righteousness, we do not merit your mercy. But Lord, like the people in Nineveh, from the king to the men, to the nobles, to the beasts, they called upon a fast and called the God of heaven and you heard them. This is Nigeria at 63. As a federal republic, 60. As a federal republic, 63 as a nation, 109 from the time of our amalgamation. And Lord, we confess that you have helped us, but there are still many things to be done. Therefore, Lord, our prayer is that you first forgive us. We take responsibility even as a ministry. In the ways that we have contributed to the current state of Nigeria, we cry for mercy. Let the blood speak upon every family, upon our parliament, our uh, uh, political spheres, the altars, and everywhere we cry for mercy. And now, oh God, we pray that beginning from this day, 
arise like the mighty God that you are. We hand over Nigeria to your loving care. Lord, we pray that you will turn this nation around faster than we thought, faster than we planned. In the name of Jesus, let us become a people of vision. In the name of Jesus, let us become a people of conviction. In the name of Jesus, let us become a people of values. In the name of Jesus, let us become a people educated indeed. In the name of Jesus Christ, let us become a place where leaders, let Nigeria be a place where leaders, generational leaders are raised in the name of Jesus where posterity becomes a determining factor in doing the things that we do Lord we pray that this be a nation that is economically empowered viable enough in the name of Jesus we pray oh God that you reveal for us a, a robust security architecture that protects lives and properties in the name of Jesus and finally oh God on behalf of of the global family here represented we cry oh God please take over Nigeria no government can lead this nation to its destiny take over Nigeria no man of God can lead this nation to its destiny take over Nigeria no judicial system can lead this nation to its destiny take over Nigeria every geopolitical zone every local government Lord we pray every of the 371 ethnic groups 774 local governments 36 states plus the FCT the six geopolitical zones Lord we pray we hand it over to you tonight in our lifetime may we see the new nigeria in jesus name we pray god bless you please rise up on your feet and let's give jesus a big hand clap thank you for your patience it's a sacrifice that tomorrow we'll rejoice over hallelujah praise the name of the lord let me just give one announcement and i make the altar call by the grace of god on friday the 6th of october will be the graduation ceremony for our Zaria campus school of ministry so we'll be rushing to Zaria and then on Sunday the 8th of October is someone excited by the grace of God it will be the graduation ceremony of our school of ministry students Abuja campus so please all family and friends make sure you are here it will be a wonderful time as we praise the Lord. Let me make an altar call. Thank you for your patience. You are in this place. And whilst you heard me talk about Nigeria, you are saying, Apostle, I desire Jesus and I also desire greatness in my life. I know that this is a place where people are being built to know and love the Lord. But I'm sure that someone came to church today wondering and asking and praying and crying and saying, give me a chance to make it right with Jesus. Wherever you are, I want to give you an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life or you are here and you are saying I want to rededicate my life to Jesus wherever you are please leave your seat and in one minute I want you to come and stand here let's celebrate them as they come someone be bold enough to come someone be bold enough to come koinonia is this how you celebrate salvation come come God bless you come God bless you come God bless you God bless you Yes, sir. You are making it right with Jesus. May God bless you for your boldness. May God honor you for your determination. Hallelujah. Now, if you're joining them, please do so quick. I want to pray right now. I want to pray right now. If you're joining them, please come quick. This is the house of God. This is a place of salvation. Hallelujah. For all of you who are here in front, thank you so much for making this noble decision. It is never a disadvantage giving Jesus your everything. May I please request that you lift your right hand if you can, high above your head. You're joining them or you're in any of the overflows and for those who are connecting online, here's your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life. Say after me, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe in you that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. Right now, I receive your life into my heart I pray that you are my God my Savior my Lord and my King let the power of sin Satan hell and the grave be broken over my life from tonight 
until forever I am a child of God. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for these precious ones. They have come declaring your lordship over their lives. I decree and declare that you will preserve them. That this decision they have made tonight, in the name of Jesus, the grace to walk in keeping with this decision, it is released upon you right now. I call you recipients of the life of God. You go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Please let me request that you move to my right. The counselors are there. That will be your left. You will have a word with them very quickly and then you'll be back to your seat. Let's honor them as they go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So Koinonia, I want to say a very big thank you. Um, what you have heard tonight, I want to encourage you to get this truth to somebody. Let them listen. This is true for nations, but it is true for organizations, for families, and even for individuals. Do not forget your assignment that you are going to do a retrospect of your life. You are going to come up with a theme and a vision that guides and governs your life. Thank you for being patient thus far. Please rise as we close the service. Hallelujah. We we'll share the grace in fellowship, but I speak the blessing of the Lord upon you in the name of Jesus. Everything your hand finds to do this week, may you experience a mighty acceleration in that area. Let the grace for honor rest upon you in the name of Jesus. As you take practical steps as a contribution towards this new Nigeria, I pray that the Lord will support your effort with results in the name of Jesus. That indeed the breath of the Spirit will rest upon you. His power and His wisdom will work in your life. Every family here is blessed. Every business here is blessed. Every ministry here is blessed. Go from glory to glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. The sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercies follow us. All the days of Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing. Keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye!